in the following study on the motion of the electron, we shall regard it as a particle with a constant mass and charge. If the electron moves in the vicinity of another charge, it is influenced by this with a force F, according to Coulomb's law for electrical charges. In order to facilitate the examination of the charge's influence on the electron, the charge is replaced by an electric field, having the same influence on the electron. The electric intensity at every point is proportional to the value of the charge and inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the charge to the point. The direction of the electric field is from the positive charge to the negative charge. The equal potentials are perpendicular to the lines of force. An electron cannon shoots a beam of electrons into the field. We may now calculate the energy that is transferred from the field to an electron. The transfer of energy is equal to the electron's charge multiplied by the potential diminution that the electron undergoes. Energy absorbed by the electron is in the form of kinetic energy. The velocity of the electron, which is proportional to the square root of the potential fall, is different in value and direction at each equipotential. In order to study the direction change of the electron path more closely, we may examine a small part of the path with a constant potential decrement. This may be divided into two areas with the potentials U1 and U2. As the electron is not influenced by the field with any force which is perpendicular to the field direction, the velocity component parallel to the dividing surface between U1 and U2 remains constant. This gives the condition for the direction change of the electron beam. The law of refraction gives the form of the electron path in complicated fields. the electron path in some different types of fields. The electrons turn back when they have been retarded by the potential difference that is equivalent to their departing velocity. In a homogeneous field, the electron path becomes a parabole. Around a cylindrical conductor, you have this type of field. Several parallel conductors produce a field of this appearance. 
If this field is superimposed on a homogeneous field between an anode and a cathode, you have the field picture for a triode tube. Electrons that are emitted from the cathode move along the paths of this type. If the grid voltage is lowered to 2 volts, the bending of the electron path becomes sharper. If the grid voltage is lowered further, the anode current is entirely cut off. A variable field is created by an alternating voltage between two plates. A space with a field variation, sinusoidal in time, gives the passing electrons an augmentation or diminution of velocity depending on when they pass through the field. The result is that the electrons of each period bunch around the electron that passes through the space when the field changes from a retarding into an accelerating phase. At a certain time, the intensity variation of the beam follows this in appearance. At an increased distance, the electrons are dispersed again. This process is called velocity modulation of an electron beam. An electric current is always surrounded by a magnetic field, the force lines of which create closed curves around the current path. The current direction in the conductor decides in which way the magnetic force line shall travel. The contribution from an incremental part of the current to the magnetic intensity at a given point is proportional to the current element and inversely proportional to the square of the distance to the point. This homogeneous magnetic field is directed towards the spectator. An electron in motion is influenced by the field with a force perpendicular to the moving direction of the electron as well as to the field direction. As the force is perpendicular to the direction of motion, there is no transfer of energy and the electron moves in a circular path. The balance condition means that the field influence on the electron is equal to the centrifugal force. This gives the expression for the radius of the circle. We study first the influence of the intensity on the radius. Influence of the velocity on the radius. We calculate the time tor for one revolution.
If the magnetic field is not homogeneous, the bending radius of the electron path will vary from one point to another. A homogeneous field in one direction and a uniform decrease in another gives the electron a trochoid form path. As the velocity is constant, the weaker parts of the field give a larger bending radius, whereas the stronger parts give a smaller bending radius. We now study electrons having a direction of motion which is not perpendicular to the magnetic field. The upper electron has a velocity component, V1, in the direction of the homogeneous magnetic field. The velocity component parallel to the field direction is not affected by the magnetic field and so the path becomes a spiral with a constant pitch. A longitudinal magnetic field is used for focusing a divergent electron beam. By a small differing angle, all electrons have almost the same velocity along the central line of the beam. The velocity components perpendicular to the central line give the electrons a corkscrew shaped path. As the time of one revolution is constant, all electrons with the same departing phase pass the central line again at the same time. Observed in the direction of the magnetic field, the electron paths in the beam have this appearance. By parallel electric and magnetic fields, the magnetic field gives the electron a circular motion, whereas the electric field accelerates the electron at the same time and the path becomes a spiral with an increasing pitch. If the electric field has a component perpendicular to the magnetic field, the bending radius of the electron path becomes smaller in the retarding part and larger in the accelerating part of the motion, which gives the spiral an axis of parabell form in the horizontal plane. By perpendicular electric and magnetic fields, this variation in the bending radius gives a trochoid form motion in the vertical plane perpendicular to the directions of the two fields. <laughs>